Dr. Ali Mugabel welcomes you to a new challenge, new problem set. This time it's related to pulse shaping and controlled ISI. There will be a few problems. I'm going to walk you through the problem set. I will be stating the problem and then you can pause the video to think about the answer. So let's get there. Question number and question number two, they are related to sink and raised cosine. The first question, compared to sink pulse, the full role of raised cosine, that's r equal to one, pulse shape, has the disadvantage of a more transmitted power, more bandwidth, less rate of decay, or more DC value. Pick the correct answer. I'll be stating the answer next. The correct answer to this question is B. The bandwidth required for all of factor compared to sync is more. And that's the disadvantage. Question number two. Sketch the spectrum of a raised cosine pulse with bandwidth, with bandwidth of 10 kHz and roll of factor of R equal to 0.25. Show all important values on the sketch. Now we can pause the video. Take to your time to sketch the spectrum of raised cosine. Show all the important values. Once you are done, you can continue with the video. Now I'm stating the answer to, the, to question number two. The answer is shown. Here's the spectrum. You should make sure that the spectrum ends at 10 kilohertz and the value of the minimum possible bandwidth is 8 kilohertz and the value of below which we have constant is 6 kilohertz. So these are the important values. Now let's move to question 3 and 4. The third question says data at a rate of 6 kilobits per second is to be transmitted over a baseband wire, wire channel of bandwidth 5 kilohertz using Nyquist criterion pulses. Determine the maximum value for the role of factor R that can be used. So we need a formula that relates bandwidth, rate, and role of factor in baseband communication. You can pause the video and take about two to three minutes to find the answer. Next, I'm going to show you the answer. The answer to this question is as follows. Here is the formula that we need to use by direct substitution for the bandwidth and the rate for R, we can find small r, which turn out to be two thirds. Question number four. In a binary data transmission using, using dual binary pulses with differential precoding. Remember, this is dual binary pulses with differential precoding. Sample values were read as in the table. I'm going to show the table. There is no detection error. Determine the received bit sequence, state your decision rule, and fill in the table. So these are the values that we received. 2, 0, minus 2, minus 2, 0, 0, minus 2, 0. And we'd like to fill in the table for the decoded data. You should know how to decode dual binary pulse with differential recording, state the rule, and fill in the table here. You can pause the video to think about the answer. Now I'm stating I'm going to show the answer. The answer to this question is the decision rule is 0 means 0, minus 2 or 2 means receive bit equal to one. Remember that this is due binary with differential precoding. The answer would have been different if there, was, if there were no differential precoding. This table shows you the correct answer. Now let's move to the last question, which was question number five. Question number five says a binary data is to be transmitted using baseband binary transmission with pulse shape having the spectrum shown in the figure. This is a single sided spectrum. You can think of the second side as a continuation of this. And the question is, if we have this spectrum, what is the transmission rate that would result in zero SI? Explain how you got your answer. To give you a hint, you need Nyquist criteria for zero SI and frequency domain. I'm going to pause the video and your job, or you can pause the video, sorry, now, and you, your job is to find the transmission rate that will result in zero SI. So you need to give me the number. Okay, you can also write your numbers in the chat section. You can pause the video and think about the answer. Now I'm going to show you the answer. The answer to this question is based on Nyquist criteria for zero SI, 
the only possible shift that will allow the signal to result in zero SI is to shift the spectrum and the new shift should be uh, to the following the following value which is 27 kilobits per second so that's the proper shift alternatively you want this point in the middle between 10 and 17 to be the fall to satisfy the following condition it should be rb over 2 and of course that will give you rb over 2 is 13.5 uh, this is 13.5 k that must be rb over 2 which means that rb should be 27 kilobits per second i'll leave you with this to think about so or you can watch the videos where we explain this in more detail this the objective here is just to share some questions and uh, challenge your understanding thank you for watching and we'll see you in coming videos please share your comments in the comment section and i would be happy to see you in coming videos thank you please share this and like it and uh, we'll see you